everyone. Today we are in Paso Robles, California, which is known as the third largest wine country in this region, with over 170 wineries to visit. I'm Danielle Lovell, and welcome to Adventures in Wine TV. The Spanish name for this town, El Paso de Robles, means the Pass of the Oaks, and saw its first wine grapes planted in 1797 by Franciscan missionaries for sacramental wine. Paso, as the locals call it, is located midway between San Francisco and Los Angeles. The soils here are different from any other California wine growing region. The dense clay, rainfall, long season and large swing from daytime to nighttime temperatures produce an intense varietal character in the grapes. In fact, in 2005, Robert Parker's wine advocate declared that in 10 years, Santa Barbara, Santa Rita Hills and Paso Robles will be as well known as Napa Valley. Join me as we visit Norman Vineyards, home of the Monster Zinvendel. So Jim, what can you tell me about this incredible winery and vineyard? Well, in 1971, my mom and dad decided that they wanted to retire somewhere, and they started looking for a, a location, a suitable location, to plant a vineyard. Um, they weren't looking at a large property, and, and we came to Paso Robles. We'd looked in a lot of nice winery regions, and they found this location that we're at now, which is in Paso Robles, California, um, the distinguished area, which we call the Adelaide area, which is a really exceptional growing region for all types of wines. What I'm doing is I'm, I'm bringing the canopy up a little bit so the, the fruit actually has more contact, more contact with the sun. It helps ripen the fruit. As you notice, we're going into veration right now, which is color change. Um, and this will happen, we're in August right now. This will happen up until the end of August into September. And then we'll start doing um, bunch selections on the Zinfandel here. And we'll, we'll test it for sugar, which we measure in bricks, B-R-I-X which is the content of sugar. We'll also do a pH, which is the acid in the fruit, to find out how bright the fruit's gonna be. Um, um, right now, it's really nice to look at when you open the fruit. Lots of juice, lots of pulp, lots of meat. Great year. This is gonna be a great year for our Zinfandel. Next, Steve is going to take us up into his lab and teach us a little bit about wine chemistry. We're running analysis on the wine that we just put together for bottling next week. And the numbers are very important to make sure the wine is stable. All of the routine analysis we run ourselves, and that includes the alcohol, the total acidity, the residual sugar, and the pH. Although the numbers are very important, most of the decisions that are made involving harvesting the grapes, how much time in the barrel, all that is, is very intuitive and is done with hands-on tasting of the wine and making decisions based on the, the flavors and the structure of the wine rather than the numbers of, in the lab. Well, as you can see, we've kind of themed our tasting room as a 50s-style diner. Jukebox, diner booths, a lot of fun. You know, our theme is food, fun, friends, and fantastic wine. As you can see, we have the, the old style diner booth, the old style jukebox. Just, it's a lot of fun. It has a lot of character. Well, we are kind of characters around here. <laughs> I'm drinking my very favorite Norman Vineyards wine, the Crescendo, which means the final act. Thank you for joining us today. And for more details, please visit us at our website at adventuresinwinetv.com. Cheers. Join us next on Adventures in Wine TV as we explore a vineyard that derives its name from the many whale and marine fossils found that date back six million years ago. Also, go back in history as we visit a winery that was founded in 1908 and is the only remaining family-owned and operated winery in San Luis Obispo County. 